Aloha everyone, my name is Lynn Costales Matsuoka and I am the Associate Director of the Sex Abuse Treatment Center, fondly known as SATC. Welcome to our 23rd annual It's Not Your Fault Luncheon. It's the second year of the pandemic and we truly miss seeing and socializing with our old and new friends, longtime donors and supporters. We look forward to connecting with each and every one of you very soon in the future. Here are a few remarks from Mimi Beams, the SATC Advisory Board President. Hi, I'm Mimi Beams, President of the Advisory Board for the Sex Abuse Treatment Center. I wanna thank the many, many people who have supported the Sex Abuse Treatment Center throughout our years of service. They do an awesome, awesome job for our community and I am honored to be on their advisory board. So first, let me thank our champion sponsors, the Tommy Holmes Foundation, and First Hawaiian Bank. They've been with us for the entire time. Heroes are Julie Watamal, Hawaii Medical Services Association, and Economy Plumbing and Air Conditioning. Additionally, I wanna say a special thank you to UHA Foundation and Dr. Thomas and me Kosasa. Thank you for your generous support of the Sex Abuse Treatment Center. Thank you so much, Mimi, for those remarks. SATC services remain uninterrupted. Our 24-7 crisis and medical services at Kapiolani Medical Center for Women and Children continue. Our short-term counseling and long-term therapy continues to support survivors. Prevention and education team develops innovative projects to reach into our community to raise awareness on sexual violence and keeping one another safe. Our mission is undeterred. We provide emotional support for survivors and look towards eliminating sexual violence in our community. Today, we are honored to share with you a video entitled Scrapbooking. It is a testament to the power of healing and the amazing spirit of survivors who have, we have the privilege of serving. We often hear of the effect a traumatic event can have on a person's life, and little focus is made on the impact of healing over the span of someone's life. The video is one survivor's journey of healing while receiving treatment at SATC. The scrapbook documents and honors her path forward. This is Janelle. It was a very, very dark time for me. I didn't wanna live. I didn't wanna deal with anything. I didn't know how to move on from what had happened. It was actually one of my friends, her stepbrother, we were playing in the house one day and then he pulled me by my hand and told me, come, come. And I didn't know what I would be doing in a bedroom with somebody like eight, nine, 10 years older than I was. They said, shh. I guess I didn't, I didn't know how people would look at me. You know, if like, because I felt very dirty you know, and that's the, that's the main reason why I never told. Because I didn't, I was just shame. I never got help from being molested. And then I went through a rape. And then I finally came to the point where I knew that I needed to talk to somebody. This is how I felt when I first started my therapy. I put, um, people say that when you look into someone's eyes, you can see their soul, and I had none. When I made this page, this was the worst I ever felt in my life. Oftentimes what we see is a person is, is re-experiencing their trauma, even though the trauma may have happened last night or last week or even a month or a year or 10 years ago, they, it's still with them. It's like a shadow that follows them. So what had happened was with my therapy, I really had to um, face each detail of what 
I experienced and what happened. As I started making the book, it took me over a year to complete it. It helped me release, release um, what I was feeling inside that I couldn't express to anybody. In my mind, I wanted to think that I was in a good place in life, but in reality, I really wasn't. I was hurting really bad. So see a lot of avoidance. Feeling those feelings, re-experiencing something terrible that you wished had never happened, you just want to get away from it. And so we may see somebody doing everything they can to push out the thoughts or feelings. And I tried to cover it up with a lot of things. You know, what I come to realize is that there's a lot of things in life that I don't have control of. There are things that happen to us in life that we don't deserve or that are unforeseen. But you know, no matter what life throws at us, um, it doesn't always have to be in vain, you know? I, I try to turn it around into something positive. I chose the book, the black book, that had family on the front cover because that's who it affected the most while I was going through the motion of everything. You know, it affected my family a lot. Mm, now that I look back at it, my relationships, my friendships, my children, it was reminders for me. I would stick these all over the place. Joy, kindness, hope, love, children, counseling, focus, listening to my heart, and lavender showers. <laughs> I am thinking that I got renewed. My life is completely different. You know, now um, I do things that I love, that I enjoy every day. It's hard to hear about all of the cruelties that exist, about all of the unfairness and the things that these people have had to suffer through. They are survivors by all means, and they are strong and they are amazing. And, you know, Somebody may have taken away their innocence, but they didn't take away their will to survive. There is life after rape. There is life after verbal abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse. There's life after that. You have to fight for yourself. On behalf of the SATC Crisis Intervention Counseling and Clinical Team, we would like to thank all of you for supporting SATC in its effort to provide a safe place for victims of sexual violence to begin their healing. Janelle is one of many survivors who we are honored to serve. Thank you for your continued support for allowing us to walk alongside our clients. On behalf of the Prevention and Education section, we would like to thank you for your support. We continue to develop and deliver statewide curriculum and sexual violence prevention trainings, whether they are virtual or in person. We couldn't sustain our growth and broaden our reach without your donations and collaboration. We appreciate you joining us in our sexual violence prevention efforts as we increase the community's understanding around this topic. Mahalo. Mahalo. On behalf of the Medical Legal Coordinator, I would like to thank you for your generosity and ongoing support. With your generous donations, we are able to collaborate with the Honolulu Police Department Crime Lab to ensure timely testing of the sexual assault kits and continue our work with allied community partners to provide a victim-centered response to sexual violence. The administrative staff would like to express our sincere thank you for your generous support over the years. We pride ourselves on the high level of care and support. We're able to provide to our patients and the community. Thank you very much. Aloha. The SATC physicians extend a warm mahalo to all of our donors. 
As physicians and early responders, we offer our patients medical care, forensic evidence collection, and just as importantly, compassionate, patient-centered care that we hope will help to support the beginnings of the healing process. Through your compassion and gracious generosity, you as donors make these services possible for our patients. And therefore, you are also an integral and truly appreciated part of our team. We thank you. On behalf of the crisis workers and crisis worker community liaisons, I want to extend a hearty thank you to our donors. Your kind generosity allows us to provide 24-7 crisis response and advocacy support services to victims of sex abuse and their families during their critical time of need. On behalf of the Kapiolani Medical Center for Women and Children and the Sex Abuse Treatment Center, we thank you for joining us for the SATC's 23rd Annual Luncheon. The SATC has been a program of Kapi'olani Medical Center since 1976, and your generous support allows us to continue serving individuals throughout the state of Hawaii who have been affected by sexual abuse. The health and well-being of our community is a priority for us, and we are committed to providing a safe and confidential place for survivors to heal and begin their journey toward recovery. We thank you and look forward to serving the community and our survivors in the years to come. Aloha.